Kyle Michael. I did my four years of undergrad here at LSU. I was also a history major. I feel like I recognize some of you. I may have had a class or two with a couple of you, but I went right from undergrad into this. Um, this seems like a really cool system right, we have right here. We kind of went in blind, so you guys already have a leg up on us. But we are just finishing our student teaching right now. It's kind of where we're at. My last day was today. I cried inside. <laughs> um, yeah, but OSU, happy to be back at OSU on campus. We've kind of been floating around. We only come to campus once a week now. So it's nice to be back, especially on this year. Um, I'm Ryan Rosenbeck. I spent, yeah, four years at OSU. Um, on your branch. I'm wrapping up my student teaching on Monday. I will openly cry because we can do that. Um, I'm a coward, so. Well, it's, it's important to express your feelings. Um, yeah, I chose the education program because in the name of total honesty and transparency, I was going to go to law school, knocked out an LSAT, and I was like, mm, I don't want to sell my soul. I can't do it. I can't, I can't defend the guilty and prosecute the innocent. So I'm just going to go corrupt, um, teach some kids, and you know, do some, make, a, make an impact that way. So that is why I chose education, was to hopefully make a positive impact on the lives of children. I was also going to go to law school. You would have been a better lawyer than me. I don't know. I talked to some lawyers. Immediately made me not want to go to law school. No. So. Does anyone have a question? Specific questions or oh, we have one back here. Yeah, sorry, I'm in the back. Um, <laughs> hi. <laughs> um, it's interesting you guys both um, sort of thought about law school. It's, I think that's the experience for a lot of uh, undergrad history students. Um, and I was just wondering, uh, is there anything um, in your experience with that, however far it went, um, that sort of translated over to what you guys are doing now? Because it seems like those two, at least history and, and law, in that regard often go hand in hand. Um, so is there anything that uh, you guys either picked up on or learned um, in your time that, that applies to what you're doing now? Sure. Man. Uh, so don't get caught in, this is like the most, friend, I'm not lecturing or preaching when I say it. Um, social studies is really a cumulative you know, field. You're going to get into the weeds on a lot of stuff, anything from political science to society, and sociology, and anything you can it's once you have a classroom, you have a lot of freedom to dive into a lot of things. It's not just so and so did this, then it is this affects us today. And that's really what you know we're trying to get into, especially in our program with you know teaching for black lives and like trying to make these positive connections and you know uplift, you know, really make that impact. Um, wanting to go into law, I hope it's not just for the paycheck and you know, driving Bentley to work, but you know, making an impact. So education, that, I mean, it transfers really easy. So if you go in with good intentions, I think you can find yourself feeling very comfortable in a classroom. You know, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, I think both of those are really great points, right? You have to have some passion. You have to really want it to get through law school and then to actually do that job. Hopefully, for a good reason, make that impact. Teaching, I mean, you get to see that impact every day. Um, and at the end of the year where we are now, just seeing where they are, we're at the beginning, this is where they are now. It feels incredible. Yeah. So you do get that. And also, I was a political science major in undergrad for a decent amount of the way, halfway, like up to sophomore year. And I use that stuff all the time. In it. So anything that you would use potentially in law school, anything about government laws, any of that interest, you're going to be able to help a lot of kids who are also interested in that. Um, different debates, if you like talking in front of people. You kind of have to do it every once in a while as a teacher. Yeah. Um, so hopefully you're able to speak in front of a crowd. If not, you'll get better at it. We have some people who are crazy shy in our program, but you start to do it every day, and you, it's just like second nature at some point. Yeah. We are not the shy ones. It's not just <laughs> on the same page there. Great. All right, thanks, guys. Yeah. yeah. No, that was a good question. Yeah. yeah. What experience do you think is most important? Um, like, what factor do you think was most important in getting accepted into the master's? Going to OSU is a good one. Yeah. Uh, you guys are in the right spot. Yeah, you've already done a lot just by being here. Most everyone is an OSU grad. I want to Re say. And 
Yeah. Okay. It's all around. But for the most part, there's 11 of us. Nine, maybe, were OSU. So that's a big one. Another, you talked about uh, experience with children, if you have any of that. But then I tutored in English in France for a little bit. So making lesson plans, anything like that, any educational experience you have with kids, obviously going to be helpful. But a lot of people that are in the program didn't have that. So my not going to you out. So I would, Kyle, will you? No, I can't. no, no, please. I didn't want to. Um, so having experience with children is great. You know, having a passion. If you can put that into words, if you can put that thought and the feelings on paper, and you know, put yourself out there and why you can see yourself being a teacher, why you have a passion for teaching, you're going to be in good shape. Um, experience is always great. I, I don't think any of us want to walk in blind to any situation, so some form of experience is good. Um, but yeah, being able to really talk about why you want to do what you want to do. Yeah. It's also good for you, but you've never worked with kids. I would maybe be hesitant to go into a program that's designed to give you a job working with kids. Right? Get to know if you actually like working with them. Some people don't. Maybe you will. Hopefully you will, right, if you're this far and want to go into it. But, yeah, if you're not doing anything right now, look around the Columbus area. There's so many different youth leagues. Mm -hmm. Sign up to work at the library and do tutoring. There's a ton of opportunities. Get to work with some kids. Yeah. What is the most difficult um, aspect that you found when you started student teaching? Was it the lesson planning? Was it just... You know, being comfortable with these people that you've never met before? That's completely up to you, really. I mean, it totally depends on the person. What, what was yours? I was, I, I might still be. I'm not entirely sure. I'm, I was terrible at lesson planning. Um, Dr. Augustine, I love her to death. She is one of my biggest role models now. But starting out the program, I was like, this woman is trying to kill me. She is <laughs> destroying my lesson plans because they were bad, not because I didn't deserve it. Um, but I was rough at lesson planning, but you put me in front of 30 kids, and I felt great. You know, it was natural. Um, I can't say that that's the experience for everyone. You know, Kyle has helped me out on lesson planning more than a time or two. He's had a pretty solid natural strength for it. But, you know, Kyle's also a rock star, so he might tell you he has a weakness, but he's going to be fine. So take that as you will. No, I mean, the, uh, lesson planning is tough. Absolutely. It's also just a lot. When you start your lesson planning, you'll have to do one for a, a full, I mean, they can be a couple pages yeah. for every day. Five or six. It's not, like well, a, it's not an every essay, day. Yeah. but they're like three or four pages. It, it's a lot. And I taught 10 classes a week. I taught two different subjects. So it took me hours to write them. You get used to it, and then once you get good at it, they cut you down to a shortened one. When you get good the short month, they cut you off. You're good. So I don't know if we were supposed to tell them that. That email surprised oh, me. Whoops. Like when they were like, you don't have to lesson plan anymore, you don't have to turn anything in. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> so it was an absolute shock and surprise. But. Well, but then that doesn't happen for everyone, too. If you don't do well at it, you will keep doing it. They push you to be better every single day. Yeah. Like you you don't float through this program. And no. I'm not saying that in like a oh I'm, you know. But you will walk out feeling confident that you can walk into a classroom and teach. Yeah. And that, I'm so grateful for that. Like, I'm not scared to walk into a classroom for the first time and run it. So. And kind of going off of what you just said about the program, I feel like, so I'm a second year going in, so I am knees deep in the prereq list, and that's my tunnel. But what's on the other side of that tunnel? What's the program itself like? Um, what do you learn? Coursework. What's like, what's the coursework like? What's the, you mentioned cohort a lot. Oh, I've yeah. heard that from a couple other friends. So just, can you give like a general, like, what is the ISS program, essentially? Yeah. Um, so we have 11 people in our cohort. Just a fancy word for group makes us feel elite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like so, legionaries. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you saw the schedule up there earlier. We had three classes in the summer. Mm -hmm. How many in fall? Four? Four in fall? fall. Four, yeah, four. Now we have three yes. right now. And those are going to look really different every semester. You'll take two methods courses, and that's like the bread and butter teaching.
So that'll give you different instruction strategies, the practice lecturing, um, really learn the nuts and bolts in those. And then if you want to talk about some other ones. So one class comes to mind, something that I thought I'd be prepared for with a history degree. And it's not that I wasn't, it's just applying it in that way. And that was our race, culture, and I think it was 5501, mm. where we talked about the intersectionality of oppression. It was a summer class. Is that equity and diversity? Yeah, equity and diversity, that's the one. Um, and you're basically taking history and you're putting a lens on it of who is in power. Like, how is it that we teach you know, certain things? Um, it is not like your history degree in the sense of you will not be writing, you know, 10, 15, 30 page dissertations on the election process of World War II Supreme Court Chief Justice. That's not the case, but you're going to be writing like four solid good pages on what it means to teach with, you know, marginalized communities in mind. Like how are you, how are you bringing them into the fold? How are you bringing in, you know, people who have been oppressed, for lack of a better word, I think that's actually the word I want to use, yes. that have been oppressed by the education system. Like, how do you uplift them? And it forces you to kind of think in a way that I was not, you know, ready to. I did a lot of growing. You know, this master's program, I loved being history major at Ohio State. I learned a lot, great classes, but it really forces you to, like, rework how you think about things, and you're going to do a lot of growing, and your, your horizons are going to expand. Um, and again, I, when I say anything, do not get intimidated by it. I am not a straight-A student. You can do it, um, especially if you want to do it. So it'll force you to grow, and it'll force you to apply things that you've learned in a way that is bringing a social good, whatever that may be, if that answers your question. Yeah, because if you want to just get up in front of a bunch of people and talk about history all day, uh, yeah, it, it's not that... Right, you guys. A lot of people have an idea of what it means to be a teacher, what they want, like how they want to teach. And my idea of how I wanted to do it completely changed once I got in here. Yes. I thought, yep, I know the right way to do it. It's like very history focused. I love history. I eat it up, and that's why I was a history major. So I just get to like spit facts at these kids all day, and it's not the case. And I'm sure that you can attest to that as someone who's been in the field for some time. So they would hate that. They would. They would not they like do. that. They will tell you. They, they, if you, they, they are, tell if you. Are, if you are boring nice. them, they will let you know. And then you can get better. It's nice. Thank you. Um, so, like, based on like, the materials you're teaching, sorry, I'm going to stand because I can't see you. Not real um, So, based on like the material you feel like you're teaching, do you ever feel like you're restricted on like a textbook or like kind of like, because I don't really know much about like yeah. where you're Yeah, I mean, you love primary sources. You might do. I love primary sources. I'm obsessed, obsessed with them. Um, there are content standards that you have to hit. The state puts out things that you need to touch on. They're very vague, right? So, yeah, I'm teaching a lesson about Reconstruction. My focus is the Halifax, uh, or Colfax, rather, massacre, right? It's um, definitely like a racial justice-focused lesson. But you are still hitting the Reconstruction standards by doing that. So you have wiggle room. Of course, with any of that, you know, you have to know your district, know your administrators. I don't have a textbook. There might be one floating around somewhere at my district, but I've never seen it. Um, first day, my mentor teacher, he handed me the textbook. He's like, do you want to look at that? I'm like, nope. I haven't picked it up since. Um, I, I never wanted to feel you know, bound to a textbook because someone wrote them. Like, if you get into this program, you go through it, you will learn very quickly that history is selected before it's ever taught. So, however you go about accomplishing those state standards, like, you know, Kyle mentioned, um, you have a lot of freedom. As long as you can say that the students can achieve that, you know, content statement. For the Cold War, we were talking about, you know, actions in Latin America and South America. I talked about the Iran-Contra conflict. 
you know, a little late in the game when it comes to Cold War, but we can grasp that the U.S. was involved, you know, in the overthrows or establishment of governments that were friendly to the United States, you know, as long as they were against communism, we were for you, we don't really care what you do in the shadows, but you're anti-communist, so you're pro-America. Um, so no, don't feel like, well, I guess it goes back to the school system that you know work in, but Pick Central, where I'm at, um, love it there, a lot of freedom. You are not bound by a textbook. Your creativity, as long as you can say that you accomplished the standard, you are allowed to flex that creativity. Unless if I'm saying something that's wrong. Oh, cool. yeah, you're right. And you might be able to teach a class that doesn't have standards. Yeah, I teach one that doesn't. It is yeah. liberating. I also teach one that doesn't. I made a sociology course. Yeah. I have a modern wars class that I turned into American imperialism. Yeah, it's it's fun. When an army veteran stands up in front of them like, hey guys, we're not always the good guys, they're like, it's kind of, it's interesting. <laughs> Any other questions that you guys have? Just like golf with that, like I know like we were just talking about like, standards for like specific subjects, but I know like other classes like AP, IB have like standards for like reading and writing. Does that get like touched on or is that like or is it mostly just like subjects and methods and stuff? In the program does it get touched on? Do we have like a class about reading, writing and all that? Yeah. Like just like teaching the different like like different standards for that. Well, it, it, this, there are standards for it, but that's also a little bit looser, and that's <coughs> not sure the right way to word that. You, there is a class that will focus on literacy that you'll take. And what you look for in writing. But when you look at what is, this is, goes into one of the classes that you'll have, um, what is, you know, what should I say, official or accepted writing and literacy standards? Like, what is, you know, educated writing. We're probably used to picking up something and it may be interesting, it may be riveting to us because it's, you know, structured, organized, someone with a PhD wrote it, you know, really great. But as a student showing you that they understand the material, are they understanding, you know, what you're putting out? And if they can, you can say, yeah, they get this. You know, they're showing their own, they have their own expression of mastery. Um, but when it comes to like AP classes and whatnot, a lot of that's handed down from you know the college and whatnot. So it's going to be a little bit more regimented. Um, but when well, they look for such certain things, yeah, right. In AP that's what I mean. Thank you. Very specific. So yeah, if you're just in a class like that, there will be very specific things laid out for you. Do we have any AP teachers in our class? No, we I mean, we couldn't. I don't think so. legally. Maggie works in a room that does, but she can't teach it. Gotcha. So does that answer your question? No, that does. Quick question about uh, your student teaching assignments. What was the process like of getting set up with a local school? Like, did you have to, I like, did you get first choice or what was that like? Yeah. Um, well, we fill out a little form. Yeah. It's about this big. It has like, two questions it's, What's your name? What's your drive, uh, drive radius range? And yeah. where are you going to teach? Yeah, what kind of district do you want to teach in? So it'll say urban, suburban, rural, private, Catholic, yeah. charter, charter. Um, and the process itself, like you fill that out. But when we were getting ready for our placements, COVID was still very much a thing. It still is, like, don't take that the wrong way, I do apologize. Um, so some of us were sweating it out on how long it would take for us to find a placement. I know that our first day was the 16th of August, or yeah, 16th of August, and I found out, I think, the 12th. Um, I was in Houston, Texas at the time. I'm like, I'll buy a ticket back when I have to know get there and I did um, but we all found placements and I mean they took care of us yeah so don't worry about that they'll figure it out yeah it's kind of that's their part of the job right is figuring out where to get you put and they ideally will put you in a place that works well for you and with a teacher who works well for you they've worked with most all of these yes. teachers before and at the point where they'll put you in somewhere they've already known you for two, three months, yeah. so we've gotten to know you fairly well. So. Yeah. If that, is that? Yeah, thank you. Any 
Any other questions? We have one. What grade levels are you teaching in your student teacher? I have sophomores in my American history and then 9 through 12 elective uh, for my American Wars modern readers. So, but I don't think the only two that we have at the middle school level are our 12th and 13th members of our cohort. Uh, they're middle childhood. So, but I think everyone at 7 to 12 is placed at a high school. Yes, I think that may have also been a question. If you wanted to work in middle school or high school. Yes. Because your lessons will allow you to teach 7 through 8, 7 and 8, as well as 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. I work with mostly sophomores, teach U.S. history, but I also have two sociology courses and a psych course, so I teach everyone from there, too. Um, and there's one thing that we didn't talk about that I wanted to touch back on, I think it was your question about what is it actually like being in there. And it's a lot more than the classes. Oh, yeah. Because I think that we'd be doing you a huge disservice yes. if we painted it as just like as college. Uh, because it's very different. Um, working with just the, that small group of 11, you all have to work kind of as a team. You're not sitting there writing papers like you do right now. You're not sitting there studying for tests. We, I, there's no tests, uh, really, other than the state ones we take. And yeah. that's, and also, I don't know, I have feelings about that. I don't think study for them. But um, we really rely heavily on each other. And the social aspect of it, to me, uh, is just about as important as any other part of it. I have 10 best friends. Like, I'm, I came into this program. I knew Kyle and a few others from classes that we took in undergrad. Um, but you get close quick. Like, for us, it was summertime. We all decided, like, hey, we should all meet in person instead of over Zoom and, you know, let's break bread. And I think from that night forward, it kind of like got the anxiousness and nervousness out of it. And get, Kyle, thank you for bringing it up because who you're with, you might not believe it, but you will walk away and you're like, I love these people. Yeah, like, absolutely. It's awesome. I was trying to say there's I love Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blushing. <laughs> I love you too, Ryan. Um. Sorry again. Um, oh, please. So, like, is there anyone who's teaching 7 through 12 and an AP course? Everybody's putting their head in, sorry. Oh, yeah, no, you're fine. <laughs> um, or, like, just an AP course or anything like that? Is there a differentiation between the two? No AP. You have to, you might know more about that. And you have to have, I don't, we're not allowed to. I, There's some special licensing thing or some special accreditation I think that you have to get to. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, you have to have some accreditation to do that. You will not do that in a program. You may be with a teacher who does teach AP. If that's the case, then you just kind of hang out while they do it. And take notes. Yeah. Yeah, for the one day. Yeah. Also, we do, I think, on observations is also important to talk about. In the spring semester, you, <coughs> not spring, in the fall semester, you will be sitting in the school watching your teacher teach, and you'll also be teaching. Yeah. They call it the observation semester. You do that for the first couple weeks, then maybe you'll take a lesson over here and there, and then you'll probably pick up at least a period or something like that. I don't know how it works for you. It depends on your teacher that you're placed with. And then this semester, we are fully in charge. Yeah. yeah. Training wheels, learn how to ride. Yep. Take them off. Um, as for seven and eight, no. Like I said, just middle. We have someone who would like to do it. I'm applying to jobs that would do that. Yeah. You will get to be in one of those classrooms. We spend a week in a 7 and 8th eighth, eighth grade classroom. I think we were both in 7. Yes. We went together. Yes, we did. Yeah. You almost forgot. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and then you'll also go to, I don't know how to word it, an alternative educational program. That has a negative connotation. Um, yeah. It was a mosaic. If that's the one that we went through, it was awesome. I called it a charter, and they were like, don't call it that. And I was like, I won't. So. It's yeah. It's not like anything I've ever seen, and it was awesome. So cool. That was one of the highlights of my semester. It was. It was a really cool experience. Awesome. All right, we're gonna wrap this up. Um, any final pieces of advice for current undergrads pursuing the program? Do you want to go first? Yes. <laughs> um, you have that elective list. Or, well, you have one. Um, if you have a weakness, something that throughout your studies you maybe didn't touch on as much, um, that's a great opportunity to maybe patchwork some things that you're not as uh, comfortable with, or you can say that you want to know more about. 
Um, great opportunity. If you can take the last 50 with Dr. Hassan Jeffries, a thousand percent take it. Um, the last 50 years of African American history are very interesting. Um, and then if you have any questions at all, <coughs> at all, um, use the people around you. I'm Rosenbeck.9 if you want to send me an email. Uh, and any questions that you didn't get a chance to have asked today or want answered about what's like in the program itself, always, always have a chat. Yeah, I can also leave my email. It's Michael.3, but no one will be able to spell Michael correctly, so I can write that down somewhere. It's M-I-C-H-L, missing some vowels. Uh, it's more efficient that way, though. Um, yeah. As for advice, for under, get that experience now if you can. You have some time. Use it. Enjoy the rest of undergrad. It's fun. Uh, I miss being a history major. This is it's a totally different kind of learning. It's also great, but I don't know. It's exam season. I kind of miss shutting myself in my room for 12 hours to write. I kind of miss it. You might too. You might too. Um, but when you do get in, and I think that if you're here at OSU, your odds of going in are very high because it's a great school. And they know it's a great school because they work for that school. Um, buy in. I think I was very hesitant at first to get on board with some of the things that they were teaching, whether that was strategies or some of the underlying philosophy. Like I said before, I thought I knew what it meant to be a good teacher before I went in. I was wrong, so wrong. So buy in and do the work. Again, if you don't do the lesson planning, you just kind of phone it in, you will be doing it forever. Yeah, they'll tell you about it. Yeah, you'll hear a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Thank you guys so much. Thank yeah. you so much. All right, and so our last speaker today is Mr. Jason Babers. He teaches at Circleville High School, and he'll tell you more about uh, his experience being a teacher and what it's like to be going, because we, you've seen what it's like to apply for the program, you've seen what it's like to be in the program, and now it's time to see what it's like after the program. Can you see that in the back? Can you hear me in the back? He's a teacher, you can tell. He's asking those important questions. <laughs> I'm Jason Beavers. You can call me Mr. Beavers, though. <laughs> Professor Beavers, too, because I actually do teach college-level classes at Ohio State. If I don't need the mic, I, I, won't, even, I won't use it. That's okay. Everybody is okay. Right? Okay, okay so, uh, I might, I mean, I might. If they get proud of me, they Start, so. I teach some classes through Ohio Christian University. Okay, so uh, what's wrong with my voice? Uh, nobody knows. Nobody has any idea what's wrong with my voice. I've tried steroids, the good kind, not that kind. <laughs> uh, antibiotics. Today, I had a doctor, an ENT doctor. What's an ENT? You're most well. yeah, he's, he's my favorite so far. Okay. <laughs> Shove a, he sprayed something in my nostril and then he shoved a, a, a scoop and he looked around down there and he basically said, your vocal cords are paralyzed. So why am I telling you this? I don't know. Just so you can know why I'm talking the way I'm talking. Okay, but what was my point? I don't remember either, so we'll go on. <laughs> it's history. <laughs> history, I'm here for history, right? So. I, uh, I did graduate from the Ohio State University in 2002. George W. Bush was my graduation speaker. Any of you have a better graduation speaker than that? Nope. Yeah, okay, I had to go through the metal detector. It was great. Um, I did not go through the OSU education program to my great detriment. I went to a lesser one. But what I'm here for is to talk to you about how great Ohio State, uh, I, I do want to say how great Ohio State is. Like, it's so great to me that I actually come back here every year, at least twice every year. I am the Fellowship of Christian Athletes Advisor at my school, so I bring them up here every year for a, a, crew, a crew meeting. And I take my college classes up here, except for the last two years because of COVID, right? to sit in on a college class. I think Ohio State's awesome. I am like an apostle for the Ohio State University, so there's that. Now, 
Um, I'm here. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the um, profession of history. Um, but, you know what, you guys were right about a lot of things. Good. What? I like to hear. One of them is, is that students don't like to hear you talk about history. We'll, we'll get to that in just a second. Some of them do. Those people are weird. <laughs> you said so you were like 97% right about the things that you said. There we go, there we go. Yeah. One of the things that you were not right about, let me ask you, when you were going to, to law school, what did you want to become? Oh, I wanted to be a judge in goal. Okay, well, what did you want to become? Defense attorney. Which means you'd basically be a lawyer. lawyer. A what? Lawyer. Lawyer? I hate these kind of questions. Can oh, I get a word back? Four letters. I feel like one of my I'm just going to say, I'm like, oh, sorry. Is this what I do then? You've got to be very specific when you're, when you have to be very clear and accurate when you're being a teacher. You study, you wanted to be a lawyer. Yes. Lawyer study. Law. Practice, but. Law here? Loy here? What do lawyers study? Do they study loy? What is going on? <laughs> I like to tease people about that. Just like I like to Oh, the pronunciation. 1786. <laughs> yeah. 1786 in Massachusetts. There's this guy, he was a farmer. He went to the courthouses, he took them over, armed rebellion. What was that called? Nate's rebellion? Was that no, wasn't that wasn't Nate's. That wasn't Nate's. What was it? Shay's Rebellion. It was called what? Shay's Rebellion. It was called Shay's Rebellion? Oh, really? That's on Are you sure? I'm wrong on Shay's Rebellion. What was his last name? Shay's. His last name was Shay's, right? Shay's. It was his rebellion, right? Where do you put the apostrophe? Here? Because if his last name was Daniel Shay, then it's Shay's Rebellion. But it's not, that's not his name. That's his name. It's his rebellion, so how do you pronounce it? Shays' Rebellion, you're my new favorite now. What's your name? Matthew. Matthew, good job, okay. So instead of me talking the entire time, so you were right about everything except the lawyer, yeah. because you don't study boy. Um, also, I can talk to you about textbooks later. I have a different opinion on textbooks than they do. But I'm intrigued, I want to hear that. Yeah. But for now, I would like for you to get out your devices Get them out. This is not. Yeah. Out. You too. I can. I'm on. I can. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't be shy. You're not going to call us. What's your name? Lauren. Lauren, this is, thank you for reminding me. My point was about the ENT scope. Yeah. Don't get old. <laughs> right. You get a punch, you get something wrong with your vocal cords, I don't know why. So don't get old. Okay. Because if you get old, not only does your body start to decompose, but students don't know the references you make. <laughs> like nobody knows what Seinfeld is anymore. Oh. Do you, you even know what Seinfeld yeah. is? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great show. Or even when you were born, it wasn't even a show anymore, right? Join.nearpod.com. Join.nearpod.com. Put in that code, please. Believe it or not, there might be a prize after I'm done. There might be a prize. Join.nearpod.com. <laughs> Kyle. Yeah. Is it Ryan? Yes, sir. You guys are good sports. I appreciate it. Join.nearpod.com. Actually, if I stand, if I stand this way, and I talk like this. My volume goes up because the paralyzed side gets stretched. That's what I found out today. It's crazy. So, what are you gonna do? Okay, how many do I have here? I only have eleven. I need more. Siri, set timer for one minute. 
we got one minute, and then you are one minute. Starting now. Out. You will be kept out forever if you will not get the prize. 52 seconds, 51. Okay, let me see. Thank you. Thank you. This guy's playing Wordle. Wordle? <laughs> 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 the Wordle? Yeah. I haven't done it yet, so don't spoil it. Sometimes it might be a good idea when you're teaching to set a time and come up with something some kind of thing about it. Either you or the students go off the rails. Okay, so there's the timer. Um, why should you be a high school history teacher? By the end of this, you're either going to um, run towards your application to fill it out, or you're going to run the opposite way and become a monk. I don't know what. Something different totally, right? <laughs> We're going to math. Now, if you can tell on this background here, there's only mathematical equations. That's because Nearpod doesn't have a background that's history related. This is the closest thing I have to education, right? A Sisyphean task. All right, who's my favorite, Matthew? What's that mean? What's a Sisyphean task? It relates to the Greek myth where he's got to roll a stone up a hill in the underworld, and he keeps going, and it almost gets to the top, and then it rolls back on top of him every single day because he tried to be like alive after he was dead. That was his punishment for eternity. Um, some days it'll feel like you are on top of the world. You'll get a letter from a student five years ago that says, you were such an important part of my life, thank you. And then other days, you'll have a student get up right in your face and call you all sorts of horrible names and want to beat you up. I had that happen this year. Mm -hmm. You know why I had it happen? Because he was sitting right here, he had his hood up and his head down, and I asked him to take it off. Wow. Okay, so that's that. All right, now, if we're in, then let's, I am going to try to, how much time do I have? Can I keep them until midnight? Okay. <laughs> the bell dismisses. The bell dismisses. I dismiss you. The bell doesn't. Okay. Why do you think Jason decided to become a history teacher? All right. Let's see it. We can't. We can't. Oh, hold on. See, when you make a mistake, you've got to pretend like the whole thing was planned. I meant to do that. <laughs> Which one do you think it was? <laughs> that is so intimidating. <laughs> you see, I could hide your names if I wanted to. But I don't. <laughs> I want my name to be seen. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Guess what I am. Fair enough. I'll make you. I'll make you anonymous. Hide student names. There you go. Okay. Is that better? <laughs> All right. I've got three point eight percent that hasn't answered yet. I need that answer. Come on. Who is it? Don't make me come around. No, I answered. Okay. Thank. Uh, now, did you see this? What is that? What is that? Nobody? Nobody? Yeah. It was either a musical, a TV show, or a movie, or like multiple of those? Yes, all three. All three? All okay. Three. Early 80s fame. I'm going to live forever. Look it up. Okay, anyway. Uh, yeah, obviously this is a joke slide, right? You're not going to get any of these things. Right? Oh, unless you know how to market yourself, which if you're getting into education to market yourself, you're probably not getting in for the right reason. So let's go to this. What do you think were the real reasons that I got into teaching? What was my personal goal? Just guess. I mean, look, looking at me, making all sorts of assumptions that you want to make, that's fine. I don't care. 
What do you think is the motivator? You're allowed to click more than one. Oh, you are. <laughs> And the answer is, for me, it was all of them except the Lord's standardized testing. Because honestly, when I got into education in 2003, standardized testing wasn't a big thing yet. You can thank George W. Bush and Ted Kennedy for that. Uh, what, what law am I talking about? Every child left behind. Every child left behind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is not, I, I am not proud of it. But coaching basketball was one of my biggest things, one of the biggest reasons why I got involved. And I echo what you said about getting, like, doing something now to help work with young students, youngsters, because if I hadn't coached basketball, I wouldn't be Christian. I would have not known anything about anything getting involved in. So coaching basketball, uh, what's that have to do with teaching history? Yikes. Holidays off, summer's off. That's nice. That is real nice. Pumpkin show off. What is pumpkin show? Circle Bill? Circle Bill? Yes. 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 Well, it's time. The greatest free festival ever. <laughs> and yes, I like history. I didn't know what else to do. What else do you do with history besides teach it? That, that's what I thought back then. Right, so the only one that's not true up there is the Lord of Standardized Testing. Now, the question is, are any of those good enough to keep you in education? Guess how many basketball games I've coached in the past 10 years? No. You'll, yeah, probably, if you're like me, you'll, you'll come to a point where you think, you realize that something's more important. And for me, that was family. So that's that. So basically what I'm saying is maybe have a backup plan for why you're motivated to do what you do. For me, what keeps me in education are the kids, because they need good role models. And I'm not just saying that, no, it's the truth. OK, give me some stereotypes you have about history teachers. Maybe that you have, or maybe that um, the popular culture has. <laughs> what did you think about some of your social studies teachers? <laughs> Man, why is that another positive? Okay, let me teach you. If you want, click down here, and that will be the uh, the category that it gets categorized under. So if you put the if you put football coaching positive, then that's fine. But if you really want a negative, just switch it. A 10 second timer. 10 seconds. Counting down. Okay, can I? Can you move this over? <laughs> Anonymous person, did you mean to put it under positive? Don't make me show your. That's good. Uh, mine was an ex-military man from Turkey who taught us self defense in all the history. That's good. Funny, storyteller, <laughs> passionate, would win on Jeopardy. That is very true. <laughs> Down to earth, all of that is good. But let's be honest. This one right here. Will you put a like on that if you've heard that one? If that's one of the major ones that you that they're only in it to coach. Yeah, that, that's, that's the way it is. Um, I'm hoping that by the end of this, if you are wanting to coach, how many of you want to coach? There's nothing wrong with coaching. How many of you want to coach? There's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure that you listen to my my point here in a second. Has anybody seen this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sherry. If you haven't seen this, you've got to go Google it. You've got to bookmark it because it is right. great. Jerry Seinfeld, SNL, teaching about World War II. Okay. So, um, what will you have to do besides teach history? 
does anybody know what the SEL stands for? You two do. I'll, yeah. I'll give them a chance. Yeah. Anybody out here know what SEL stands for? Yeah, good. Well, that's ESL, English as a Second Language. And that's not fair, right? It's the same letter, just switched around. But you're, that, that's not bad. That you know a good, a very important acronym. Anybody? So what is SEL? Social Emotional Learning. Do you know that it's going to have to be your responsibility to help, if not to counsel, at least identify the social and emotional well-being, like the needs of students in their social and emotional lives, and direct them to the right people? Did you know that you are mandatory reporters? So if you ever see cuts, you've got to report it. If you ever even hear a rumor about abuse at home, you've got to report it. Oh, this is fun. Did you two have to do any of this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Isn't it great? Love it. It's so good, right? Um, George W. Bush, in his memoir, Decision Points, basically said it like this. If you want to know how good your baseball team is, your favorite MLB team, what do you do? You open the paper up and you look at the stats. That's how he was defending No Child Left Behind, by the way. That's what we've got to do. We've got to have data drive our instruction. So and even though if you're getting into history because you love history, just understand that you're going to have to have data to back up what you do next after your lesson. And that's not history. That's more math. And I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way I do about math. Um, you have to do student discipline. How many of you are going to are wanting to be a history teacher because you really want to be a disciplinarian? You like the authority, like the right truth theory of education. <laughs> You're gonna have to, right? You have to. Have, what was your classroom management class like? Do you want to tell them? Have you had it yet? Yeah, yeah. we've had. Some, yeah, I would say some methods. Yeah. So ours, I mean, I'm sure it's changed so much over the years, but ours is very much focused on building a community, yep. right? And that if you do that early on, you set, like, co-create norms with your kids, uh, then you don't have a lot of those behavioral issues. They respect you, and honestly, they kind of like you. They want to do better in your class. They want to be better. Let's be honest, even the disciplinarians care if their teacher likes them. It's true. That's just the truth. You have to deal with that in some way, shape, or form. And sometimes um, you might have to make a tough decision about whether or not a student gets to stay in your class, whether or not a student gets to pass. Nobody wants to fail somebody, but you might have to make those tough, tough decisions. Um, I put on seven performances a day. <laughs> seven performances a day. How many performances did you put on a day? Seven. Seven. Because, like I said, nobody wants to see you just up here talking and giving notes and filling in blanks and all that kind of stuff, right? You've got to be a performer. Now, some of you, your personality type, anybody an extrovert? Like you, the, the, taking the Myers-Briggs, right? You've got the extrovert in. Ooh, not everybody. Okay, if you're not an extrovert, it's okay. If you're extroverted, that is going to pump you up, man. Because extroverts get their energy from people. If you're an introvert like me, how many of you are introverts on the Myers-Briggs scale? You're going to go home, worn out, <laughs> and that's okay. You just got to figure out your, some type of self-care to help you, you know, re recharge. I'm going to end on this really hard. Even if you want to go into history teaching for coaching, continual professional development is key if you want to be a good teacher. Otherwise, you will be that stereotype by the time you're my age. You have to keep going back for more. And I can give you some great places to go for that. And that thing I said about having summers off, guess what? If you're a good teacher, you'll be working during the summers. What are you guys going to be doing in the summer? Applying for jobs, <laughs> interviewing, right. hunting, begging, pleading for jobs. Right. And but then, once you get it. Oh, um, Professional development courses, seminars, uh, reading, staying up on things that you should be teaching. A lot of content stuff, brushing yeah. up on that. Uh, planning for the year ahead with your tentative plan. You got to. You have to. You can take a couple weeks off in the summer. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you don't 
keep up with things. If you don't play for the next year, it's going to be, your year's going to stink. I'll just put it that way, right? So you're going to be working summers, doing that. You might be teaching summer school. You might be putting on some kind of you know, basketball, football clinic, tennis clinic, whatever. Right? Now, here's the thing. If you love history, that might be one of your motivators, right? Does everybody get to teach history? Here's some of the things you might have to teach. Why don't you try to see if you can match the correct hairs? Oops. Okay. I meant to do that. I meant to do that. Pardon me. Um, forgive me. Wrong slide. You have to have humility as a teacher, but when you're wrong, because you will be inevitably. Just like they were about lawyering. Yeah. Wait, that's going to keep me up tonight. If all those things I just talked about were things that you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, when do you actually get to start talking about history and studying history, the thing that you love? When do you get to do that in your classroom? Okay, I've got a never. I've got a happy face. I've got squiggly lines. Uh, this is great. This is this is the great thing about Nearpod. Watch this. Yay! <laughs> now, let me just so if this is you and you want to tell everybody what here's what I here's how I interpret this. I get up, I go to school, I do all that crazy stuff throughout the day. I might get to talk about history for a minute, and then when I get to go home, I get to put on PBS and watch a documentary. That's <laughs> <laughs> that is golden. Whoever's doing that, guaranteed, when you become a teacher, that's going to annoy the heck out of you. Because you know what? The student that I was like annoys, like, what I was like as a, as a student annoys the crap out of me now. Did you find that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so we, my name, one of the names I picked, I was messing around with the teacher, was, teaching is not a real job. Uh, I feel a little silly now. And I can't even get mad at him because I'm like, oh, I was you and I had so much fun in high school. That's a good part. That's a really good part. Someone's got silence. That was the memory. Whoever did that, that was that was very good. Yeah. Now, I don't want to want chastise whoever star 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 is by not doing anything here. Like when do you get when do you get to actually talk about history in school? So I mean I go in pretty hard. I tell them I'm like, alright, this is what we're doing today. So if I have a 46 minute period, a great day is like 20 solid minutes of, well, me talking about it is like 10. Yeah. But working on history is like 25-ish ratio wise, half on an amazing day. And you can have your own personal, like here's where I draw the line in the sand. I will allow five minutes of fluff, but every, every other minute after that, you have to be doing something or else there's a consequence, right? You, you, can, you can make it as, but I guess my point here is, is that there's plenty of time to talk about this stuff. But really, for me, it was the planning stage. I love lesson planning. It was the time when I got to like nerd out about history. <laughs> Unfortunately, when you get to class, they might like it, they might not. So it might feel like history or it might not feel like history. Yeah. Keep in mind, because of how the teenage brain is structured, most of your students won't really be interested in what you're talking about. Um, that's just a fact of life, right? right? That's just that's just a fact of life. So that means you have to be well. Let's see. What do you think? They won't be interested in what you're talking about unless you. What do you think? Do what? 
Ah, you can't draw Garfield now. <laughs> What do you think you have to do? What What did the best teachers you have to do to make you care about what they what they were talking about? Wow. What? <laughs> Watch a movie is another stereotype, but I promise, clips of movies can be used to very good effect. Clips of movies can be used to draw them in. Say funny things is very good. Oh, look at this one. Look at this one. Mix it up and go crazy every once in a while. Make the students realize you're not teaching them. I wish I could enlarge that too. The ball is great. Tell a story. I mean, the word story is in the word history, right? Come on, it's a high story. <laughs> Connected to their lives, that's good. Wear a funny hat, that, that, that always works. Can't just fit ball facts, must include interactive activities. Yep. Yep. Just shave your head one day, I'll get their attention. <laughs> Involve them in history. It would be great if you could get uh, make connections with the local history. Society and have them do the students do community service for those organizations, those kind of things. In other words, being passionate about what you're doing. Like you gotta have you gotta have the passion. You gotta have performance. Otherwise, it's not 81 percent. What happened to the other 19 percent? All right, all right. All right, all right. Look at this. Oh, oh but see good the code up there at the very top. Yeah, wouldn't let me sign in. What? <laughs> right. We're winding down, I promise. I promise we're winding down. I don't know why I'm I promise we are. What might you have to teach? Go ahead, then, if if you love history, you should go into this knowing that you may not if you want a job, you might have to start off doing something else. So if you have the pairs, matching pairs up, just see if you can match the things together that you should be expected, expecting to teach. What is this? Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, it's a matching game. Okay. Click, click on the matching that pairs. Just takes me a moment. <laughs> I do this on Duolingo every day. Learn <laughs> <laughs> uh, Spanish. Learn Spanish. Take another maybe 30 seconds. Let's see. Is this Adriatic House? It's good to know that Adriatic House is still open. I was an RA on South Campus. Many a night, Adriaticos and Catfish Biffs kept me alive. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about any of these magic pairs? No? Because some of these things are things that you might have to be willing to teach if you want a job. I mean, that's, just, that's just the way it is. Make sure that you work towards what you want. No. Here are the things that are <laughs> all right, I know that I have gone over a little bit. Let me just I 
think every everybody's kind of gone over a little bit tonight. I played the, played those two for the time, but I don't think it's much. There's also a business side to education. I don't want to like talk about those too much. If you don't want to talk, does anybody have any questions about those things on the board? Things that you might need to know about as you're going into the education field. Anybody? Anybody? I was a union president for a couple of years. <laughs> Teachers are the worst students. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, notice at the bottom I talked about professional development again. It, that is very important for me. Let me tell you about a way that you can get your uh, master's degree paid for. I bet you wish it had known. Yeah, this. where were you a this year ago? Ridiculous, man. Can I still do this? Um, you can do it for a master's degree in history if you want. If you want to get a master's degree paid for, there is a program called the James Madison Memorial Fellowship. And every year they take uh, pre-service teachers. So you, will, right, then you get to go through the program. Or you can be somebody like me that I didn't uh, apply until I was six years in. Uh, and they pay for your entire master's degree. Be twenty-four thousand dollars for the master's degree. Um, it's a competitive thing. It's pretty. It's pretty prestigious, right? But um, you get to go to Jamestown University for a six-week, four-week residency, and you get to choose where you want to go for your master's degree program. Ashland is where I went because I was very much dedicated to that that program. But um, OSU takes people uh, from here as well. You just have to tailor your master's degree towards what they're asking you to, to do there. It's basically um, improving the teaching of the, the founding of the Constitution. That's another tip get any kind. Okay. Ask a question or else. It can be anything. How much money do you make? I'm not saying I'm going to answer. <laughs> How much money do you make starting out? When do I get to leave? That's fine too. Mandatory questions. They're coming in like a flood. at Ashland? No, I did not. I went for a Master's of American History, Master's of American History and Government. Um, that's not really a question because there's no question mark. So, should I do this or be a professor? Well, it depends. Do you want to deal with classroom management? Do you want to create lesson plans using Google Forms and Nearpod and Kahoot? Quizzes, or do you want to be more scholarly? I guess. I tell you what, though, for this one right here, should I be a professor? I would make that decision now. And don't wait until you have the golden handcuffs like me. Do you know what golden handcuffs are? If I go into a PhD program now and get a job as a first year college professor, I will take a huge pay cut, like $40,000 pay cut. 
campaign. So make your decision now. I have a dog that is a um, puppy, and he's really annoying. <laughs> My daughter named him Chocolate Chip Brownie. <laughs> um, is this still a thing? Birds are real. I, don't know. <laughs> I didn't think that was still a thing. Um, I have a European swallow. Now, wait a second. Are you sure it's not an African swallow? <laughs> Any other real questions, though? Yeah. When did you feel confident as a teacher? Like in front of the room, whether that was with your material, with your ability to present? At what point did you feel like, yeah, I'm doing okay at this? Um, I think it was my first year teaching, I was not a good classroom manager. Yeah. I was scared. Mm -hmm. I was scared. I mean, that's just all there to it. I didn't have any confidence. That, that summer, I spent a whole summer lesson planning. I spent a whole summer like finding my spine and say, this is what is negotiable in my class, and this is what is not negotiable in my class, and I have stuck to it. And, um, and then, the first day that I tried to walk, that I tried to walk, walk the talk was awful, but I did it. The second day was even worse, because I had to do it again. Right, so, um, yeah, it was that, that next year, um, that second year, yeah. There was actually a question that, not to, Oh, no, please, please, please. There was one that I think should be answered. Yeah, where is it? Looking at the demographics, is it difficult for women in the field of social studies? It's not. Okay. Now, yes and no. Yes, as in there are still in certain pockets of Ohio, if you're going to stay in Ohio, there are certain pockets in Ohio that just expect a social studies teacher to be a male football coach or a male basketball coach. I, that, that's, that's the facts, and I hate to say that. I, I, don't, I would not want any of those barriers to be up, but unfortunately, that's, they just don't think like, oh, I could hire a woman. Right? I mean, that, that, I, I hate to, to say that. But in other parts, and I hate to stereotype, but more in the suburban and more in the, the urban schools, they will want to have more of a diversity of voices. And so it really just depends on where you want to go. Just kind of know, know where you're going, know where you're applying to. Um, that's my anecdotal answer. It's not backed up by, by research. That's just how I feel. How something difficult can mean a couple things. Would you be comfortable being the only female teacher in your department? Because like, my school only has one. My school has four. And one of them is the head of the department, CUCP and AP classes only. You're going to get a widespread. That's a very good question. Okay, if you want to stick around for the front, is there anything else that needs to be said after I'm done? No, I mean, I can, I'll just close it out. Okay. We will ask um, for those of you here, you, know, you need to get ready to go soon. We have an attendance form. Uh, floating around somewhere. I'm sure Lauren on the left. Uh, up by the door yeah. in the pizza, that little corner. If you could please fill that out before you leave, it's important for the um, department to keep track of that. We've passed it out at the beginning of the meeting, but a lot of you have come in since then, so if you could just sign it out um, or sign up, we'd really appreciate it. If you want to participate in this, this is obviously optional. This is for a prize. going to be very disappointed in the surprise. <laughs> I'll wait about 10 more seconds. Oh, by the way, this is not about my presentation. This is about history. Because I did not know how much I didn't know about history until I started teaching and realized, oh, I've got to teach that? What is that? So, here we go. Did you find the same? What was that? Did you find the same that you didn't know? How much you didn't know? Uh, yeah, every weekend is podcast time. Before every class is uh, Google time. Oh, yeah. You got a four to five. Yeah. Even if you think you know it. They will ask you questions. Can you guys see that? Oh no, just the first question. It's like you entered too late. Please wait back. Chill out.
I did too. I went to teach ancient history. I am not an Americanist. I'm a Europeanist. I Americanist. Nice nice camera. They tell you. I was going to say, surprise. <laughs> well, I got it right though. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, will, I will put that in my presentation. I was the exact same way. Exactly.
after I had taught it to them.